tube. So what do we have here? We have... Uh, what do we have? We have... A present from Jens from individual computers. Ah, individual computers. Okay. It's January the... I don't know what day is. January the... Uh, six or something. Congrats, your hardware has just come home. Two year warranty. Okay. So what do we have here? We have an ACA 500 plus. CF interface, freezer and accelerator for the A500. Ooh, A500 and 500 plus. So this is the A500 plus. As you can see, it looks very similar to the ACA 500, which I have here. I'll just uh, I'll get that in a moment. But on the other side, we now have what I believe is a clock counter. Don't know what that is. Reset. Who knows? ACA 500 plus. Oh. And this is the mailman. Hang on. Oh no! Don't need me. Okay. So that is the ACA 500 Plus. We'll try it in just a second or two. Uh, for the Amiga 500 and 500 Plus. Now the old one did work on the A1000 and I have had them working on the Amiga 2000. Uh, but I don't know about this one yet. I haven't experimented as I've just opened it. But anyway, that is the 500 Plus, uh, the um, ACA 500 Plus. So I'll put that there. If we compare that to an ACA 500, you can see it's a lot less busy. Put them side by side, put them that way. See, there's quite a bit more going on on the um, 500 plus. The original uh, ACA 500 had the um, 68 EC uh, 68,010 this one has a big sticker on it so I can't see I can't tell what that is but anyway we have, what do we have? we have RAM in the middle is it the same RAM? nope, different RAM Still have the clock port on there. Rapid Road USB and Silver Surfer. And this little device. Hmm. Okay, well this has just come. As you saw, dear customer, thank you for purchasing uh, a product from individual. Okay. Do not install the ACA 400 Plus on a Amiga 1000. All right. Display mode, all right. Firmware menus, overclocking, cloaking device, CF card, installing a CF, inserting a CF, debrick mode, micro MS. All right. This adapter allows you to connect an optical PS2 mouse. Does it with a scroll mouse? Yeah. Just connect the adapter between the mouse and your Amiga. What are you talking about? Connected to where? Anyway, so that is the ACA 500 Plus short manual CD, uh, CF card interface, freezer, and accelerator for the Amiga 500 and 500 Plus. Now, the freezer part, I think, is an action replay type. Uh, thingy my bob, which is in the firmware, but I don't know about that because I haven't really read about it. I did quickly read about it and then I've instantly forgot. So we'll plug it in so you don't have to look at my Christmas uh, 
throw that's on my uh, setting. So we're back in a moment. So here we are again, as you can see the ACA 500 Plus is plugged into my uh, Amiga 500 Plus Revision 8A motherboard. 2 megabyte chip RAM, apart from that it's a standard machine. And as you can see the ACA is in there. And uh, doing what an ACA does. So I'll just move the camera now, we're on tripod. Ignore the mess, I'm halfway through doing a C64 video. As you can see, this is uh, seamlessly professional. Not really. Okay. Is that square? Squarish. Okay. So there are a few differences to the original ACA. Uh, you still have the F1 and 2 are the same. F3 I think was the same. F7 is new, which is the ACA Plus installer. What that means is if you plug a blank disk in uh, a blank CF into the um, uh, CF um, port on the Amiga, you can now install Workbench uh, once it's been set up with um, HD install tools. That is. Uh, so you can install um, Workbench 3.1 now onto a blank uh, blank disk or a blank card, so you don't need floppy disks or a GoTech or anything else, which is quite nice. Um, I would imagine a lot of the old Amiga 500s now, the floppies have died. But anyway, that's what that's for. F8, uh, Global Profile Settings and Flash Updater, updating the firmware. F9 cloaking device. What a cloaking device does, it makes the um, ACA be invisible to the Amiga, so it just doesn't know it's there. It, all or most functions are disabled. I think you can select some options like some RAM or various other things, or the ROM. Um, F10 expert mode. I'll press F10. Or was that F9? Oh no, F10. So, as you can probably see, Force PAL or NTSC is off. Map ROM is on. So it load the ROM into RAM. Trapdoor RAM is enabled uh, because it has trapdoor RAM. 7 megabyte fast RAM enabled. 1 meg chip is built in. Uh, it already has a uh, one megabyte expansion in the trapdoor, which will give it two meg chip, so it's already got two meg chip. IDE update is on, or IDE driver is on. I shall put the auxiliary CF on, which is the PC formatted or MS DOS formatted CF card. See if that comes into life. I've just popped a DOS formatted card in there. I'm not sure if it's FAT32, FAT16, or the hell it is. Uh, MMU libraries, that's 68030. CPU switch, okay. Kickstart ROM, it's loading 3.1 ROM, revision 40. The freezer is disabled, which is the action replay um, card. I haven't played with that yet. Q, background stars, presumably left or right or frozen. DFO is enabled, it is. Uh, you can select, or with this card, you can select DF1 to be the boot drive. If your DF, uh, DFO is knackered, you can use DF1 or DF2 or whatever. Floppy click, okay. Real time clock, uh, I do have a real time clock kicking about somewhere, but it's not plugged in. Uh, CPU speed, I've set this to 42 megahertz. I shall boot it through the speeds so now it's going to be 7 megahertz so this will be standard Amiga speed with just some fast RAM uh, ACA resource not sure what that is virtual auto config automatic virtual disk off HRT monitor monitors your HRTs I don't know what that does so we'll 
press return to activate that configuration and boot. So this is now running, hello me, this is now running at 7 MHz, so it'll be a little bit um, sedate, I should think. It's amazing, the Amigas, or the Amiga 500 anyway, seemed a relatively quick machine back in the day. And now it's just a long wait. I know my Amiga 500 was 1.2 Amiga, which um, my mum bought in. It was just reboot now as it copies the ROM to RAM and reboots again. Uh, my Amiga was bought in February 88, I think it was. It was a 1.2, it had just been to, uh, reduced to £399. Uh, and I suppose it was a belated Christmas present, I don't know. But, um, yeah. It did seem a very fast machine, but then I was used to the C64, which ran at 1 megahertz, so the Amiga was seven times faster. Although it didn't seem it, like all software or hardware, no matter how fast your hardware is, the software always catches up and makes it just appear just as slow as it always was. A slight blue tint on my screen, but that's, um, that's a start SCART connection to the back of the TV. Could jiggle it about. So this should be 7 megahertz. If I can drive this mouse on my leg we'll have a look. Two megabyte ECS, which it is. So it should be the speed of a B2000. Or perhaps a little faster. I oh, know. So it's the same speed exactly as it should be uh, to an Amiga 2000 or an Amiga 500 with fast RAM in it, which is what it is. So that is perfectly correct. So let's check the drive speed or the CF compact flash speed. What did I press then? Speed. Oof. Wrong button. Oh my god, it's so slow. Right, drives. Uh, volume name. It's an interesting volume name. Let's check the speed of that. So this is at 7 megahertz, remember. Thousand, so that's yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. Okay. So that is seven megahertz. Turn the machine off and back on again. That should get us into the menu, or a green screen. I oh know menu. F10. So it's booted me back up to the original speed settings, so I didn't save them last time. So instead of having 7, let's have 14. And press enter and we'll boot those. Rather than saving them to NVRAM. So the boot speed should be more or less twice as fast now. I'll, um, I'll unclip the camera from the tripod in a moment to show the AC card booting from uh, from cold, so you can see the boot sequence. There's various lights flashing and numbers flashing about on the display. I should be timing this, shouldn't I? No. Oh. So this is 14 megahertz, if you believe what it tells you. Oh yeah, boots, uh, boots. It goes through the menus a bit. Of the, it goes through the icons a bit quicker. Displays the icons quicker. I mean, so what speed will this give us?
doesn't really equate to anything. Almost a um, almost an O20, but not quite. Okay. Right. Let's see what difference it makes on the drive. The drive speed is um, very much CPU um, uh, driven. Faster CPU, the faster your um, hard drive speed. There we go. So we've doubled. We've doubled the processor. We've doubled and a bit the um, hard drive speed. Okay. So that's. 14 megahertz, isn't it? 14.1, okay. So off. Back on. F10 to the menu. Number 7 again. So we've done, oh, disabled. What have we done there? Disable the RGA F6. No, 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 no. Right. Um, number 7. So this is 21 MHz. So we've gone from 7 to 14 and now it's 21. So it won't be double again the speed but it'll be a percentage of Someone clever. Oh, hello. Didn't like that, did it? Twenty one. Why is why is it done that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is it done that? Freeze is off. The freeze CPU is seven. We'll try that again. So we're not bothered with 21 because it doesn't seem to like it. So we'll go to 28 see what that does. I haven't tried all these speeds yet. Um, I've only been using nothing like that either. There's obviously a very good reason for this, but I don't know what it is. So the next option is only 42, which is the speed most people would use it at anyway, full speed. I dare say if you play with the settings you could make it run at an intermediate speed. Okay. This is my uh, my Amiga 4000 CF card that I've um, buggered up the um, startup sequence. That's another story. So this is what 42 megahertz, isn't it? Okay. So let's try the drives. Okay, 4,600, which is probably the fastest um, fastest speed I think I've seen on the Mega Drive. Quite impressive. I will compare these to the original ACA. I do have an original ACA here. Uh, 
what can we do? This is almost, but not quite, 68 to 30, 25 megahertz speed. It probably wouldn't be 25 megahertz, maybe 15 or something. But yeah. What uh, what's got what's got good 3D? Frontier Elite Two Fears AGA. Where is Frontier? I think it does. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Anything will do. This is alien breed. Obviously, this is an ECS machine, so I can't be running any um, another world. Let's try another world just because we can. Print screen to quit. So, the people who use WHD load will know that you should need a 68010 to um, use the quit options but apparently this has got code built in so you can use the quit key successfully without having a 6000 uh, 68010 do I need a joystick for this? I think I do That's quite a bit quicker than an A500 in standard trim. Good evening, Professor. I see you've driven here in the larder. Uh, don't do it. If you click on the other box, I mean, it's just disaster. We all know that one box, box plus two box equals disaster. Don't do it. No, 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 no. See? Boxes going in circles, always a problem. Yeah. Don't have your Pepsi. Oh. Hello, one box. Yeah. So you've come in the Black Lotus Europa. With flat tyres.
If you do, don't jump onto that rope. Oh. Pew. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh. Okay, that's enough silliness. Don't know where Prince Green is on Omega 500. How did he quit the damn thing? Whatever key that was, that's what it is. So then, we'll take the camera from the tripod. And what I'll do is I'll reboot the machine, throw the mouse out of the way, zoom out. Okay. So here we are, the ACA. Turn the computer off. We'll turn it back on. So FE, which gets us to the menu. So we'll press return. And that will start to boot. There we have Amiga Workbench, or a version of it anyway. So, there we are. I might do a comparison to the original ACA, but everybody knows what the old ACA looks like and what it does. There's not a lot to say. I'll turn this power off. I'm not sure if I can unplug it with one hand, but we'll have a go. Take those out. Oh my god, it's a good fit. Come on, son. Okay. One issue I had was um, when I powered this Amiga up this afternoon, it gave me a blank screen initially, which was the CPU socket that's a little bit naff. Um, but when it did boot, I plugged the old ACA in and it came up with a menu. When I plugged the new ACA in, uh, it was just a blank screen. The reason for that was I had to clean the contacts with IPA. I also cleaned the edge connector, which was a bit dirty. But I cleaned the edge connector first plugged the old ACA in and it booted plugged the new a yeah, ACA in and it would not boot so oh I can't do this with one hand yeah no I'm not I don't want to break it um, yeah so the ACA would not boot until I cleaned the connector pins with some uh, IPA uh, isopropanol alcohol cleaner I'm sure it must have something similar if you buy this card. But if you get a blank screen when you turn it on, that'll be what it is. I think that just displayed O, that zero, 00, I think, when it wasn't working. You know when it is working because it starts to jump about the place and then the screen will come on a second or so later. So if you buy one of these things, it doesn't work. Um, clean the edge connector. You don't have to take it apart. Then clean inside there with a toothbrush or something with a bit of uh, alcohol on there and it should work fine. But that's the ACA. Uh, what do I think to it? I think it's superb. I think it is an excellent accelerator. 
the for the Amiga. Um, obviously, you can plug eighty uh, a a twelve hundred accelerators in there. Over the years, I've plugged in twelve thirties, twelve forties, and twelve sixty accelerator cards. Not sure if I ever put a PPC in it. I might have done. Have I? I can't remember if I ever. I haven't. But anyway, uh, the Blizzard cards seem to work okay. Twelve sixty. The Apollo don't because the RAM isn't detected. The CPU is the RAM is not, so there's no point. Uh, there are obviously 32-bit cards on Amiga 1200, so you get the 32-bit fast RAM. Uh, as the card is at the moment, it's 16-bit fast RAM. Not that to the average person that makes much difference. But the 32-bit cards, the proper 1200 cards, make the machine run much faster. Uh, I have got a couple of A1200 cards I could try. I might do that later. But yeah, is it good value for money? It was um, 179 euros, I think, which equates to about 150 pounds or 160 pounds by the time it gets to the door. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. Uh, I think it's got two-year warranty. It's a brand new piece of hardware. It is very well made. There's gen stuff. Uh, always has been, especially in the last handful of years. Very, very well made. Uh, high quality soldering, good quality of circuit board. Excellent. The features of the card are second to none. You have uh, an actual replay on it if you want one. You have a virtual floppy if you want one. You have the option to use a PCCF card, a, uh, a FAT32. Uh, you can run multiple ROM versions various RAM configurations and various speeds now of this of the um, 680 uh, so overall is a first class card very well uh, very well made worth buying I ordered it just over a week ago and it's arrived it's now the 6th of January I think I ordered it I don't know when I ordered it might have been the 1st of January or the 31st of December, I don't know. But it's taken about a week to come. So I can't complain in any way. Well packaged, well made, superb. Thank you very much.